Okay, hello dear friends. Page 205. Since she had uh, spent a vast amount of money on bribes, on bribes already, and she was deeply upset that Justice Department announced that her son was to be sentenced to death. <clears throat> she began to bribe many other people, but the situation did not change, and Xue Pan was left to wait in prison to see what the court sessions would say in the odd in the autumn, and Xue was reduced to spending all her time in a, in a fit of anxiety. The news that her husband would probably soon be executed led Jing Gui to cause even more trouble. She now acted completely as she pleased. When Xue Ke returned to the house one day, he was shocked when Jing Gui barred, barred the door and started to flirt with him. When he tried to leave the room, she grabbed hold of him and he began to shake. He began to shake. You are my sister-in-law. You shouldn't. Be, you shouldn't be acting like this," Xue Ke stuttered. But Jing Gui simply tried to pull him back into the room, whispering that she had something important to tell him. It was at this moment that Xiang Ling walked past, and caught sight and caught sight of them. Though Xiang Ling hurried, turned, turned around and walked away, Jing Gui remained frozen in shock, giving Xue Ke a chance to take a quick escape. Jing Gui was then consumed with hatred for Xiang, for Xiang Ling. So this is uh, Jing Gui, and she saw it and run away. Page 206 206 Me. Oh gosh, I have a hard time to see it. Bao Yu could not stop thinking about Dai Yu, and his grief increased when he watched all her servants being redistributed. He was consumed with sorrow until it occurred to him that as she had been fully conscious when she had died, Dai Yu must have returned to the kingdom of the immortals. The thought made him feel much better, yet it was then that he overheard Bao Chai and Xi Ren talking nearly, talking nearby about Tan Chun's upcoming marriage. Once again, Bao Yu could not control his feelings and burst into tears. When he had recovered his composure, composure, he said, I cannot go on like this. All of my closest, closest relatives are disappearing. Is no one going to stay with me? Why should I suffer on my own? Xi Ren and Bao Chai try to reason with him, but he cut them off by saying, They needn't leave so soon. They may as well wait a little while until I am nothing but dust 
and ash. Page 207 One evening, when Xi Feng was on her way to visit Tan Chun, she saw Qin Ke Qing's ghost in the cousin's court and was scared out of her wits. When she visited the Lady Dowage the next day and found that she was talking about the need for more sacrifices with Abby's Da Liao, Abby, Abby's Da Liao, from the temple of scattered blossom, Xi Feng decided to go against her usual skepticism and asked if she could go to the temple in two days' time. On the first day of the month, to consult an oracle, she was still confused and worried about the ghost she saw in previous evening. One of the first, on the first of the month, Xi Feng therefore took Ping Er and many other servants with her to the Temple of Scattered Blossom. After lightening incense, after, lighten, after lighting incense sticks and bowing down in reverence, Xi Feng held aloft the bamboo box holding horoscopes and moused a prayer concerning her ailing health and the ghost she had seen. She then took the box a number of times until a, sleep, sti a small slip of bamboo fell out. When she bowed down to pick it up, she saw that it read, Number 33, very Auspicious. Xi Feng consulted the oracle book and found that the number referred to the entry Return Home in Glory. Xi Feng was puzzled, but Da Liao suggested that it meant that Xi Feng had never been back to her hometown of Nanjing since she was a child. Jia Zheng's new position might lead to him calling his family to him and allowing her to return there in glory. However, Xi Feng was not completely convinced by this explanation. Page 208. When Madame Yu, Jia Zhen, and Jia Rong became sick, everyone in the mansion began to whisper about the evil spirit in the cousin's court, and the servants became too nervous to cut a flower and tend to the garden there. They jumped with fright at the sound of the wind or cries of birds and mistook their own shadows for hideous creatures. Jia Shu was the only person who remained unconvinced, so he called some of his servants to accompany him accompany to accompany him to the court to, to look around. However, one of his servants became so scared that he collapsed in a faint. In 
In the end, Jia She resigned himself to calling in some Taoist priest to perform an exorcism in the cousin's court. They selected an auspicious day and uh, had an altar place and had an altar placed in the hall of reunion. The three Taoist priests, one holding a sword and a jug of holy water, one carrying a black flag decorated with seven stars, and one bearing a wooden rod to drive away the evil spirit, stood in front of the altar. After the music finished, the priests began to began the ritual by calling for bottles in which to trap the spirit. Once they had sealed these bottles, they instructed that they be taken back to the temple. They finished by offering thanks to the gods as the altar as the altar was cleared. Jia She thanked the priests for their hard work, although Jia Rong and some other men had trouble not laughing at the whole ceremony.